Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating the days between dates using the date and time picker control with Excel VBA. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in this worksheet a green rectangle. If I right click, go down to assign macro. I have this associated with sheet1.openform, this subroutine. So if I move over to the Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11, you can see I have this subroutine sub open form with one line of code, main.show. Main is the name of this green user form I have here. On this user form, I have two date and time picker controls and I put these on this user form through dragging them from this toolbox here on the left. Now to get them on the toolbox, go into Tools up here on the top and Additional Controls. In this dialog, you have the opportunity to select Microsoft Date and Time Picker Control. That'll place it on the toolbox. So I have these two controls and they are not default. I made a change to the custom format property here on the left for each one. So it displays the date in this manner. So I have the full day of the week, month, day of the month, year, and time. So here's the code for that. And just to make that a bit easier to see, I'm going to move it over here to the worksheet. Just paste it into cell C5. So this is the custom format code I used for the date and time picker. Moving back to the Visual Basic Editor. Additionally on this user form I have these labels days, years, months, hours, minutes, and seconds and I have six text boxes. Text box 1 through text box 6. So when I select a date from date and time picker 1, the top one, and then a date from date and time picker 2, the number of days between those dates will appear here as well as the number of years, months, hours, minutes, and seconds. So first I want to put some code in for when this form initializes so that the date and time picker controls default to today's date. So if I double click on the user form, the top right here has click, I move down to initialize. So anything in this subroutine will run when the user form starts. So I'll delete the default click event and move down here to initialize. And I'm just going to use two lines of code. DT picker one dot value equals date and the same thing for DT picker two value. So it'll set both of these controls to today's date. Next I want to create a subroutine that triggers when date and time picker 2 in this control is changed. So if I double click on DT picker 2 by default it's call back key down. I'm going to change this to change. I'll delete the default subroutine. So sub DT picker 2 underscore change. The code I'll be using is here. So dim x is long. That'll declare x as long. x is equal to the date and time picker 2 value. That's the second control minus date and time picker 1 value. So text box 1 dot value is equal to x. So that's the number of days between these two dates. And then I use the same logic for text box 2 and so on except I use the worksheet function text to change the format of x. So we have worksheet function x comma y. So this is the number of years in quotation marks. Then we have number of months, that's mm in quotation marks. 
And notice when we get down here to hours, the H is in brackets. And all that is in quotation marks. That's for the hours. Same thing for minutes, MM in brackets in quotation marks. And seconds, S in brackets and in quotation marks. So let's test this out. I'll move to the worksheet. Click on the green rectangle to open the user form. And I'll change the date for date and time picker 1 control to the 27th of January. And for the date and time picker 2 control, let's go with February 28th. So you can see here for days, we have 32 days, no years. It's showing two months because we have one full month and a partial. That's why it's displaying two months there. 768 hours, and of course the minutes and seconds as well. An important thing to recognize here is as we move over each month, notice how every value increases except for the months will reach a year and then it will reset. So when it reaches over a year, years changes to one and months is back at one. The days represent the total days between the two dates as do the hours, minutes, and seconds. However the months will keep cycling and it will always be between 1 and 12. I hope you found this video in calculating the days as well as other units of time between dates to be useful and thanks for watching.